The next verse, verse 627, is part of a little sequence. The first two parts of this sequence being the previous two verses, which were covered in the previous two videos. So it might be worth checking the, the previous two videos out if you haven't done so. They both relate back to a, a verse that I covered in the very first video. I'll read it out again. The Lanka, that's the Lanka Vatara Sutra, asserts the existence of a reality which is perceivable only by the eye of transcendental knowledge which is in the possession of a wise man. It is the exalted ultimate self-nature of all things. And as it can be recognized only when our spiritual eye looks beyond the realm of discriminations, which is ruled by laws of being and non-being, it is also called the truth of solitude or the absolute. So, we're endeavouring to look beyond the realm of discrimination, which is ruled by laws of being and non-being. And I covered these laws of being and non-being two videos ago. So the next verse, 627, mentions these rules of being and non-being, and also the truth of solitude which is mentioned in that verse which I just read. So 627. Thus the Samkhya, the Vaisheshika, the naked philosophers, the Brahmin theologians, followers of Shiva, cherishing views based on being and non-being, are destitute of the truth of solitude. So, so this verse is really having a go, isn't it? It's having a go at, at probably what was, what were the current belief systems of the time. The Samkhya, the Vaseshika, we've looked at these already in previous videos. I think you can check out verses 540 and 558, for example. The Naked Philosophers, and these are probably the Jains uh, whose founder Mahavira was a contemporary of the Buddha, the Brahman theologians. These will be the ones behind the Upanishads, or those who follow the Upanishads, perhaps the followers of Shiva, the Shivites. They're all accused here of cherishing views based on being and non-being. And as I said, I've covered this before. But what would they all have in common? They're all accused of cherishing views on being and non-being. Well, I suppose they're all accused of painting a particular picture of reality and saying, this is how things are. And the reason for doing this is so they can exert control. It might be mundane control, social control, or spiritual control. You want to have the gods on your side. You want to say, this is how the world is. If we work according to this understanding, then it's for the benefit of all, or the benefit of the individual. So if you want salvation, if you want liberation, follow this method, follow this understanding. The Lankavatara Sutra is not concerned with what is true and what is false. It's only concerned with realization. It points us to that awareness within which all experience happens. All ways of thinking are ultimately 
restrictive. So when you've got this solitude, the truth of solitude, then you can be whatever you like. I remember when I was quite young, it was a bit of a realisation, I suppose, although well, not a particularly good one as it turned out. But I realised the contents of my head, the contents of my thoughts, were my own. Nobody else had access to them. I could think whatever I wanted to think in here. Unfortunately, what I chose to think I was driven by the hormones of my body. So I tended to get into some quite limited fetish based thinking. So that's a bit of a trap. So really what I was inviting into this wonderful space were lots of limiting influences, let's put it that way. I invited lots of limiting influences in which sucked my attention and emotions into them. But let's say I didn't do that. Let's just say I decided to be happy, no matter what. Maybe I'd have been incarcerated as a lunatic having an idiot smile on my face, no matter what's going on. I don't know, but that would have been a possibility. And this is the possibility, though, that we have. This is the realisation we have. This is the truth of solitude. We don't need to care about the judgement of others, about the reality that others are promoting. We can be ecstatic regardless. This is, a, this is the meaning of solitude. Being unfettered by the expectations of others. Being unfettered by the emotional expectations of others. How about that for a possibility? But it's not just by the expectations of others, it's by the expectations, more importantly, of our own psychological framework. In other words, the expectations of our moods. So the truth of solitude is nothing other than liberation from our moods. This is bliss. It's not a blissful mood. It's bliss. It's the bliss of mind itself. Because we're no longer concerned with views based on being and non-being. We're no longer concerned with constructed realities. We're no longer concerned with understanding. We're no longer concerned with true or false. How liberating is that? We just get on with things. I was going to um, think of some modern equivalents to the Samkhyas and the Vaisheshikas and the naked philosophers because these were the constructed realities at the time that this was written and there are many constructed realities going on in our modern day and age we're not too concerned about the Shivas the Shivites and the Brahman theologians and so on but I, I don't think I'll bother. There are one or two targets I got lined up in my sights. But 
particularly those targets that claim to have some kind of monopoly on authentic spirituality. But I think I'll leave that for now, because I think the spirit of this verse is really to move beyond these constructed realities which are based on being and non-being, defining what is and what isn't. Because it's just so nice to drop it all and not bother. I mentioned in the previous video how a, a Buddhist recently described me as deluded. And, and how liberating I found that. Possibly more liberating than if he described me as enlightened. I, I wouldn't be too happy about being described as enlightened. Although if it's just a way of showing appreciation, why not? But all that going on regardless, it doesn't really matter. When practicing mind only, when practicing the truth of solitude, we're free. We are free to experience unlimited wonder. Unlimited wonder, unlimited happiness, unlimited love, bliss. So this is the truth of solitude. 